I am your host, Bob Asadorian. Love home rental? Want to learn how to repair, remodel, beautify and maintain your home? Then don't change the channel. This program, Just Ask Bob, has two goals in mind. Always, number one, to motivate you to get up, get off the couch, and tackle and complete that never-ending to-do list of repairs and renovations around your own home. Number two, demystify the process, not only for home rental DIY, but also the hiring process of how to find the right contractor for you and your home, for whatever reason, maybe lack of skill, lack of endurance, lack of knowledge, maybe the ladder's not tall enough to reach the second story eavesdrop. That's completely fine. For whatever reason, as long as you know the in and outs, you know how to find the research, and you know how to find a licensed contractor, you're gonna do very well. Now, speaking of licensing, Hamilton has a master building repair license. Some municipalities in Ontario have them, others do not. At the provincial level, Ontario chooses not to license or regulate us handy people, handy men, renovators, contractors, whatever you want to call us. So it's the Wild West. They leave it up to every municipality. Hamilton has a beautiful system. One, two, three is how the system works. Number one, the prospective wannabe new contractor has to present to City Hall, to the Trade Exam Board, a police clearance. Think about that now. You have valuables, maybe young ones in the home. This contractor might be working in your home from well before you leave for work, and he may still, he or she may still be there long after you're back from work. So the police clearance matters. Number two, two-hour examination on the Ontario Building Code. No ifs, ands, or buts. You gotta have a 70% pass, open book examination. You get a pass, you've proven not only to the trade board, but also to the beloved community that you know your stuff. That's important. Number three, prospective contractor or newly licensed contractor must sign an attestation form stating that they carry minimum $2 million liability insurance. Why is this important? Because this contractor is not only regular guests in your home. They may be causing damage. The potential is there. That way they must be insured. That's absolutely critical. Follow us on our website, largest home improvement database on the net, www.justaskbob.com. That's where you send us your questions. This program's interactive. Your questions may be answered on a future program or in our newsletter, or we may simply pick up the phone and call you. Follow us on social media. You'll find Just Ask Bob or type Bob Asadorian into the search bar and you'll find us on social media. Follow us for everything to do with home rental. Speaking of home improvement questions, we have a nice one here. This is going to kick off today's rental. Hey Bob, what is the easiest way to unclog a kitchen sink without chemicals? Can you do an episode on ABS drains and P-traps? I'm going to tie my husband to the couch and make him watch and learn. Thank you, Nicole. Very, very much appreciated. We love these questions. And big shout out and a thank you to our renovation firm, Triple R Inc., which is just piling on the jobs left, right, and center because we use that footage that we extract on our real job sites. And with that footage, we put together these programs for you. Now, a moment ago, we talked about licensing. That's very, very important because unlike reality television, today's host is actually licensed. Not one, but two, the contractor and the master for building repair. Nothing would put a bigger smile on Bob's face than to know that you're learning and you're doing it yourself. Second thing to make me almost as equally happy is if you hire and find the right contractor for your own home and at least you have an idea. You know a little bit about faucets. You understand the variety of drywalls. You understand the variety of flooring materials on the marketplace. That way you will always, always have a successful renovation. Stay tuned. Up next on one of our job sites, 
and we're going to answer the viewer's question with a variety of work on ABS drains and Bob's going to unclog a kitchen sink. Stay tuned. Certainly not Bob's favorite time of year. Icy cold, snowy winter morning in East Hamilton. Beautiful wartime bungalows. And here she is for our plumbing project. Welcome to our job site. Very special thanks to the homeowner, Nina. She was kind enough to have us in her home and we're going to tackle the sink. The sink has a sort of a slow drain on and off. Now it's very important for homeowners out there to understand baking soda and vinegar is safe. You do not, do not want to use harsh chemicals. They create heat and the heat can burn these joints, the ABS glue on the joints themselves and it can cause a lot of trouble. So you want to be very careful with it. Two ingredients, vinegar and baking soda. Now a lot of people have told me they haven't had success with this because they'll simply use not even an eighth of the package of baking soda and they're barely going to use any vinegar. The Just Ask Bob way, if you're going to do it, do it right. We're going to be using two of these and we're going to be using nearly four liters of the vinegar. Again, if you're going to do it, do it right. Start off with the baking soda. There you go. Done. Give it a chance to get in there, flow down the drain. For those of you at home, if you're sensitive, wear gloves. Us contractors are tough as nails. We don't wear gloves. Watch the reaction now. This will not harm your sink. Actually, it'll make it sparkle. It will not harm your plumbing. And it shouldn't harm your skin. Give it some time to fizz. Very strong chemical reaction, which will literally scrub away any debris in the pipes. A little bit of agitation helps. Now this is a two bowl sink. For those of you at home that can't see on the right side, it is fizzing. I chose the left side because when you look at the plumbing underneath, this is the side that goes down to the P-trap. The right side only has about a 16 inch pipe, horizontal pipe that runs approximately 16 inches to the left to drain into this pipe. For those of you at home, I recommend one of these small, affordable snakes. Later on in the program, you will see us use a larger one, but this is a great help. You see the bubbling in there. Poke this through, ram it up and down. You can see the debris coming up. I'll try to get a piece here that's floating to show you. Ram that up and down. There, uh, it's hard to pick it up, but
there she goes. The last couple of pokes, I felt it move through something. So that would have been likely the debris inside the P-trap. But we'll check the clean out afterwards. Now, let's test this out. Believe it or not, yesterday before we arrived, the homeowner had told us this sink felt like it practically took an hour to drain. This is nice, steady. And I don't know if you can see at home, Nick want to pivot a bit, the right side. Empty. Prior to us using the baking soda and vinegar, as this would drain, it would fill up on the right. That's not good. That shows the indication of a blockage. And then look at the little vortex. Well, gone. Excellent. 